All right, here's another uh, pretty easy method of joints uh, problem. I think we can do uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so if P1 is 800 pounds and P2 is 400 pounds, uh, then determine the force in uh, each member. So I want the force in all members. Um, all right, so let me... I, I don't normally uh, advocate for this, uh, but I think I could get away with not looking at the whole free body diagram at the very beginning. Uh, I mean, there there is a CY here. There is an AY and an AX here. But could I just start at joint B? You know, could I just start at joint B? Uh, because it has uh, two, it only has two unknowns. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, now, what's going to happen is... I could go back to my um, whole free body diagram at the end to double check to make sure that my, it's kind of, those will be my three redundant equations to make sure everything is still in equilibrium. But sometimes you can, uh, and especially depending on see, seeing what the problem statement is really asking for, sometimes it might be helpful not to look at the whole free body diagram, but to start. And so I'm going to start at, B. Let's try that. Look at the free body diagram for B. I already knew that I have 800 and I have 400, uh, but then here I have the force in BC. It is at an 8 by 8. Okay, it's at a 45 degree. Uh, you could say 8 by 8 by something, but I'm going to say 45 degree uh, angle right here. And then I've got the force in AB, which is not quite 45 degrees. It is at 6 by 8 by 10, right? 6 by 8, 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. It's really a 3, 4, 5, right? All right. Uh, what do I want to define as my X? Uh, define that way. So summing the forces in the X direction, negative 400, uh, FBC cosine... FBC cosine 45, and then minus FAB, let's see, the X component would be the 6 tenths, or the 3 fifths component, equals 0. Uh, let me jump to the next one. Summing the forces in the Y direction, negative 800, positive FAB, and you see, that I'm, just, I'm just focusing on this, right, not, you know, draw that free body diagram. When you draw good free body diagrams, then, then you, everything is in that free body diagram. Um, FAB, let's see, the 8 tenths component is going up, and FBC sine 45 is going up, set those equal to zero. We've got two equations to unknown, so however you like to solve simultaneous equations, you know, that's not part of this class, uh, but uh, I do like to notice when I have 45 degree angles and say this is equal to that, so, so I would solve for this and plug it in for that, and anyway, I've got FAB is 286, uh, it came out positive. So I guessed correctly, I always guess tension. And then I plug this back in right here and solve for FBC. FBC would be 808, it's positive. Uh, so I guessed correctly, it was 808 in tension. All right, so now I've got this one and this one. All right, um, I don't think I can go to A because I, don't, I haven't solved for AX. A, Y, and I'd have three unknowns, right? I, I, I don't know A, X, I don't know A, Y, I don't know the force in A, C. Uh, but over at C, yeah, I think I could do at C. So at C, let me draw the free body diagram at C. At C, I've got C, Y. Um, I've got the force in A, C, perfectly horizontal. And then I, I solve for this one, B, C, B, C, B, C, B, C. That was the 808, right there. It was in tension. Uh, tension is always pulling. Joint B feels it pulling that way. Joint uh, C feels it pulling this way. Uh, and it is 808. 808. 808. All right. And it is at still at this uh, eight, oh, at this 45 degree angle. Can't go wrong with 45 degree angles. All right. So now let me sum the forces in X, sum the force in Y, sum the force in the X direction. Negative 808 cosine 45, negative FAC equals zero. 
So FAC would be 571. Uh, it came out negative. Let's see. Would this come out negative? Yeah. This would be positive minus FAC. This is negative 571. So FAC is 571 pounds. I, I still need units here. 571 pounds compression. And, you know, I, I could actually stop right there. I could stop. Right there. I could sum a force in Y to solve for CY, but it doesn't ask for it. So, so you can see, and maybe don't do this just yet, but the more comfortable you are with these truss problems, with these method of joints, then you don't have to do the exact same strict process start to finish the same way every time. Generally, I like to look at the whole free body diagram, and I would solve for CY, AX, and AY, but I notice that, hey, you know, it's not asking for CX or CY, AX, and AY. It's asking the force in each members. And if I see a joint that only has two unknowns, I might could just start at that joint and then see if I can hop to uh, the other joints. Okay? So that's kind of interesting. It kind of made the work a little bit shorter if we recognize, hey, I can just start at joint B and then go to joint C.